thanks, for, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Martin, for asking me. So when Martin asked me to uh, talk at the fringe, I said, yeah, yeah, of course I will. What do you want me to talk about? He said, uh, democratic accountability. I thought, I don't really know what that means. So I think it, what I think it means, what I'm going to take it to mean is, what say do people have in the service that they uh, receive, and how can they influence that service, uh, either individually or collectively in communities, some we've talked about, or through the ballot box. Um, and I'm going to touch, I'm going to take five examples from my experience. The other thing that I've been is clinical director for Central Manchester CCG, so I'm going to take examples from uh, uh, the Health and Wellbeing Board, I'm going to talk about the Health Scrutiny Committee, I'm going to talk about CCG's general practice and then um, uh, the Acute Trust. So uh, I think there is some democratic accountability, but not a lot in the NHS. And somebody mentioned earlier that the left has been pretty quiet on democratic accountability. And I think that is the thing that we can major uh, through this parliament and, and get it uh, more notice. So, the Health and Wellbeing Boards have been uh, set up, and I think they, in Manchester, have worked very well. They consist of the uh, council leaders, uh, the commissioners, and the providers. And together in Manchester, I think my own view is that they've been a positive force for change. Uh, they've certainly been engaged with devolution uh, to Greater Manchester, but more specifically to changes within the city of Manchester. And, Without their driving force, we probably wouldn't have made some of the advances we had um, in, central, in, in Manchester, for example, uh, in, in mental health services, and in particular, in uh, arguing to bring together the three Manchester hospitals into one hospital. And the accountability there, therefore, is through the elected members of the council, and um, they uh, will have a, 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 a say, and the Health or Being Board particularly has a say strategy for the city. So I think there is some uh, democratic accountability there. Um, one of the functions of the local authority is to have a health scrutiny committee, and I've appeared before the health scrutiny committee on several occasions. Uh, they're very energetic, but sometimes uh, one issue kind of uh, committee, uh, they, uh, they, they consist of local councillors, uh, and usually most of them are pretty rounded, have a view of, of the health service as a whole. Sometimes some of them are a bit like a, a dog with a bone on one particular issue. But uh, in any case, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are entitled to call people from the health system and uh, put, put a case for or against whatever they're proposing. In my case, I went up there uh, uh, in front of them a few times to talk about GP access. Uh, and GP access is, a, is an issue that that, uh, that I, I hold dear. I don't think there's enough of it. I don't think GPs do it well enough. And I don't think the system is particularly responsive to patients' needs. And um, perhaps that's something we might want to discuss later. Um, so uh, in terms of the CCG, the Clinical Commissioning Group, the Clinical Commissioning Group uh, is probably thought to have more influence and power than it actually does. Um, and that's my personal view. And the CCG is a membership organisation. The members of the CCG are the GP practices. So there's very little, in my view, um, uh, democratic accountability in the CCGs. They are accountable to their members, to the GP practices. And if the GP practices don't want to do something, they won't do it. Um, the CC CCGs do have patient participation groups. And Martin was on our, our one in central Manchester, and he can probably speak more uh, 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 informally about uh, what influence he thinks our patient participation groups have. Um, personally, I think they were a kind of add-on and uh, 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 given a chance to speak every now and then, but didn't really, uh, weren't really listened to as much as they might have been. But Martin's a better place than me to talk about that. But, the main role of the CCG is to hold the second secondary care budget, um, and it, it was it is it was focused on managing that as well as the prescribing budget. So its main function was to try and reduce activity into hospitals and rebalance budgets into primary care. So uh, I don't think there was much democratic accountability in the CCGs either, and I think for them, if they still exist, 
they will need to uh, they will need to find a way of arguing for but uh, better inputs from uh, ordinary people. So general practice. Well, general practice uh, is not part of the National Health Service. General practice is contracted to the health service. Um, it is they are uh, GP practices are autonomous. Uh, they are independent contractors. They have no more democratic accountability than the high street optician or the greengrocers, as far as I can tell. In theory, general practices do have part patient participation groups, and they're very variable in how they respond uh, and work with patient participation patient groups. My experience is that most of them uh, offer them lip service, and that's about it. So again, some, something else for the left to work on. I particularly, I especially feel that, that is something that we should be doing much more about. Um, um, and, and we can discuss that further if you like. In terms of the acute trust, uh, of which I'm now a non-executive member of the board, uh, I think there is a reasonable amount of democratic accountability uh, in, in our acute trust. Uh, the acute trust is made up of its members. Anybody can be a member uh, within reason. And I would encourage anybody who isn't a member of their acute trust to become a member of their acute trust, because ultimately uh, that's uh, where, how you can have a role in saying what happens at your acute trust. Members elect the governors. Martin's just been elected the governor. Our acute trust, I think, I'm correct in saying. Um, and Martin will, as a governor, be holding the board to account, be holding me to account for the direction of travel of the acute trust. Um, the governors also have the power to appoint and dismiss the chair uh, and I think the chief executive as well. Uh, so, not the chief executive, um, but certainly the chair and the non-executive directors. So, if anybody in the left is not a member of the acute trust, they should think about becoming one. Um, so, that's really my experience of democratic accountability in the NHS. Um, I think there are gaps. I think it is something that we should pick up, uh, and I think there's great progress we could make if we if we did make it a priority. So that's all I have to say for now. I'll be happy to join in the discussion. Thank you.